Hello and welcome to the stream. I'm uh, DJ Ware, and uh, yeah, I, I uh, was trying a few things yesterday, got a few things working, and then uh, of course a Linux update came by, and uh, yeah, you know that story. So <laughs> about five minutes before the stream, discovered, uh oh, there's a couple of things that aren't working. So, so I, I don't. Let's see. I don't know how many people are here. Maybe not too many, but uh, let's see. Yeah, I got a couple. Welcome. Uh, what I was going to do today was just kind of answer some questions, and then Ubuntu released 2110, so I thought maybe go through an install of it, see what's different um, with it. I know that there's a new kernel. I know that they've done some work in the snaps area, and so, yeah, we'll probably take a look at some of that today. And if, and then, of course, answer whatever questions you guys might have as well. But I don't think... I don't think the stream is doing all that well. Um, yeah, it says it's an excellent connection for now, so I guess we'll <laughs> cross our fingers and hope for the best. Maybe with enough motion on the video, it will um, keep the, uh, the uh, uh, streamer from buffering, but we'll see what happens. So, hey, Keith. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jeffrey. Good to see you. Yeah, it's uh, it's a problem with the ATM with uh, the ATEM. Uh, it in the when you're <clears throat> streaming with it, it it has some problems. And when it starts to fill up its cache, it has a problem where it just can't seem to empty it. So yeah, it's a bug, obviously, but. Yeah, that wasn't the only bug I encountered today as well. So <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna. I think what I'm gonna do until some more people arrive, give them a chance to get here, is talk a little bit about. I've been working with some software called Nisus, and I'll let me show you what that looks like. If I can find my get my mouse back over here. There we go. Nisus is a auditing and uh, pen testing tool that allows you to take and up and uh, run it against your servers. Now this is the this is commercial software. However, there there is a version called uh, the Community Edition, which you can use for free, that limits you to 16 total servers that you can have this pointed at. It will do a number of things. It will look at, uh, hi Kill Switch, nice to see you. Uh, so, uh, so it'll do a couple of things. One, it's it's going to scan and look for vulnerabilities. So, if there are problems in your installation, and that can be Windows, that can be Mac OS, and that can be Linux, uh, it will look at it and determine whether or not you have applied all the patches that you should for the vulnerabilities that are out there. But it can also do things like uh, just do analysis on a single uh, system to see whether or not, and it can actually, you can have it log in. So you can give it a login and a password. It'll actually go in and it'll do a more in-depth analysis. And when it does that, it actually starts looking at, um, you know, how, you, how are your files permissioned? How, what kinds of, you know, potential vulnerabilities would someone have? would someone be able to exploit in order to lift themselves into an administrator mode and take control of your system. So, yeah. Hi, Lospec. Nice to see you. Uh, it, was, it was fun watching uh, watching that game last night. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I've never seen battering rams just disappear like that in pieces. It's kind of an interesting game. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed that. It was kind of fun to watch. Um so I, I, uh, I ran some things and I found some things out. So one of the things that uh, I applied to was I use uh, SSH, which is the secured shell. And I have a number of servers that, of course, do that. Uh, if you run SSH, you have to be careful as to which keys you're allowing to uh, be used to encrypt the channel. So there are a number of them that have gone obsolete. So 
And of course, Nisus looks at that and it found a number of those issues. It also looks at if you have a mail server that you're running, it'll look to see what your TLS key strength is, whether or not you have any vulnerabilities there. So yeah, I'm just starting to learn it. So I'm not ready to do a video on this yet. I'm, I'm about two pages ahead of you in the manual and that's probably about it. OpenBSD7, yeah, I saw that was out, yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it, I promise I'll get to it. Um, I just I did six eight, and then they turned around and released seven. So you know, that's what happens when you wait too long, right? And after a, a release of a of a system, but I just had other things to do. Um, so what I wanted to do today was take a look at Ubuntu twenty one ten, and I I have I have not installed this yet. All I've done is created a virtual machine. This particular uh, hardware pattern will take about, I'm, I'm going to give it four gig, I'm giving it four cores, and of course I'm using Proxmox as my virtual machine. Um, as far as disk, it's about 32 gig, I think. Yeah, it's about 32 gig of disk. So, I mean, that's overkill for this. That's way overkill, but, but you know, I might use it for something else. You never know. So I had planned to use pop out chat today and uh, Debian, <laughs> it's just been, big. every time I turned around, something was upgrading today. I was like, wow, I guess it was time, time to start all the upgrades. It's been a while. They, they haven't done much all week in upgrades and all of a sudden, wham. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that and we'll go ahead and start this up and just kind of walk through it. I know I noticed there was a couple of things I saw on if you're using secure boot, it had a couple of options to set up some passwords uh, if you're using secure boot, which was kind of interesting. Now this of course isn't gonna isn't gonna do that. So this is the live environment. And you could, you know, if you don't want to install it and you just want to kick the tires on it and find out what's new, you can do that. I think what I will do is, let's go through the release notes here. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thanks for, thanks, Savin. Thanks for stopping by. Um, you know, you can always catch it later. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the recorded version of this out there. So, let's see what we got here. And this is Impish Indri. What did we add? We added. Uh, well, I know that they added GNOME support 4.0, and um, which is the desktop for for Ubuntu by default. And of course, they have a number of spins for Lubuntu, Kubuntu, Budgie, Kylan. Uh, Mate, Mate, and Studio, and uh, Zubuntu. When am I gonna? When will I install Fuchsia? As soon as well, they have started to package it now. But the last time I went out to look, <clears throat> uh, Noir, the last time I went out to look, it wasn't complete. And when I did a compile on it and I got it to work. Um, but it, it was pretty early on. So, yeah, I mean, I would, I would classify that as not even alpha. I would say that that is pretty early in this, in at least a couple of months ago, it was pretty early in the development cycle. Now, Google has a tendency to move pretty fast because they do have a lot of people that can work on projects, but uh, I don't know what state it's in right now. The, I tried it a couple of weeks ago and the build failed. So, yeah. Um, if they get an ISO built, I would really appreciate that because that would be a lot easier to, to stick it into a VM uh, versus trying to, you know, bring the bring the development environment up and then compile it and then transfer it out yourself, which is a lot more work. I'm lazy. I like for the developers to do it once. I mean, having all of us do that work over and over again seems silly to me. But I'm just saying, just saying. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, it's 5.13 kernel. They've updated the C compiler to 11. And LV, LLVM compilers are now version 13. Golang is up. 
Yeah, this is pretty. This is pretty new. Pretty new stuff. I noticed that one of the things they did was that they have actually inserted the proprietary NVIDIA drivers into Wayland, which is the replacement, of course, for X Windows on Linux, which is the base handler for uh, graphical user interfaces. So. Pulse Audio. I know that's getting clear, uh, getting closer. The last time I saw anything on this was Red Hat was working with the Pulse Audio team to add video support. So they're planning on adding streaming. So I don't know if that's going to be, they haven't announced yet what the features are, whether it's going to be H.264 or H.265. Maybe you guys know. I had I haven't gone back to look. But I know that they're doing a lot of work with the Pulse team to add video, so, so that'll be interesting. And the next, the future releases of Ubuntu, I'm sure we'll pick up on that. Uh, okay, well, I don't need to read all that, and I'm just going to install it. So let me, let me minimize that. We'll just walk through and install. Now I'm doing this on a buy on a legacy BIOS. I guess I could turn and then it was down here when I was doing it on. Well, let's do that. Let's let's just put it on. You can do that, right? It's a it's a live stream. We can do whatever we want. Let me just power this off and we'll go back and fix that. I'll have to destroy this because uh, it has to create a um, it has to create a storage location for the secure boot so oh come on I right, will just crash it I don't really care die <laughs> okay so let me uh, let me delete this one And then I'll create a new one while it's doing that. I've already got one that's called that. That's why I'm adding the extra one. So, all right. So I go out and get my ISO, which is the CD-ROM. And we'll pick that up. And we'll send this over to Spice. Uh, I missed something here. I thought I did. Yeah, it looks fine. Wait a second, what's going on here? Where's my advanced mode? There it is. There we go. That's what I was looking for. There we go. UE5. And then I, you have to give it this location or wherever you want to create the UEFI and then QT35 you have to set for Linux. That's just you always have to do that. At least I do on Proxmox. And I'll give it our usual four CPUs. Give it about four gig of memory. And this is probably going to be more common on hardware anyway that you're going to encounter this kind of an install because most of the hardware I've seen coming out lately has all been defaulting to UEFI and Secure Boot. And if you're running Windows 11, of course, you have no choice. H.265 is really meant for 4K. It's not really meant for uh, HD video. And yes, it is a resource hog because unlike H.264, it's it's taking large chunks of the screen to determine how to compress it, whereas 
uh, H.264 does not. doesn't use the, quite that much real estate to determine the compression. But, but it's really H.265, as, as, as I recall, back in the days when we were standardizing it, it was really intended for 4K and above. I don't even know how well it would work on, on uh, 8K, which is now a thing, and 12K is now a thing. Yeah, so if I install the third party, I have to give it a secure boot password. So I'm assuming this is going to be like an encryption, or is this going to protect? Let's see. I'll, I'll give it a super secure password. <laughs> I'm just going to try this and see what happens. If it blows up, you'll have something to laugh about. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to do anything fancy there. And continue. Actually, it's not a strong password, but I'm glad Ubuntu thinks so. All right, let me, uh, let me get this up a little bit more. This will take a while. So, it, yeah, I, that's true, Jeffrey. That is very true. Is there any questions I can answer for you while we're waiting on this? This will probably take a few minutes, about four minutes probably, four or five, to install it. Although I noticed that Ubuntu, uh, at least on the server, on 2004-03, it was going through like a number of steps. It was doing one section of install, then it would flip, do another section. I guess they're laying down the prerequisites as they go until they finally get to the part where they decide to actually install the baseline operating system. But I guess they're building it up because they have to have, of course, some pieces that in order to do the setup for the users and the directories and the mount points and all that fun stuff. It's getting more complicated to install software. And so, yeah, there's more steps. We'll see how this does. Is the audio okay? Can you guys hear me all right? Tell fall asleep. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Lospec. <clears throat> thank you, Skittle Wrap. Well, that seems to solve the issue. I'm throwing more video. I'm throwing more stuff at the encoder on the ATM. So I, I turned on the animation for the background. And that seems to be helping it stabilize the stream. Give it more to do. Give it more to try to compress. I, uh, I hope somebody else can answer that, Jeffrey. I don't use Cinnamon. I know there's a number of people that do, but I i mean, I barely even use a GUI. I just, <laughs> you know, I live in the command line. I 
it's not an, <clears throat> for me it's not an elitist thing it's just that's just where I grew up and that's just what I prefer <clears throat> I mean, I do use the command line. I do use the GUIs occasionally, but not too often. I'm a dinosaur. What are you going to do? <clears throat> It's taken a little bit longer than four minutes, huh? Oh, you're welcome, Kill Switch. Yeah, it was a tough decision. I, uh, you know, it, for me, it made more sense to go to Debian because. A lot of my, you know, a lot of my other, like my ARM systems are all Ubuntu because I run Gluster, which is a clustering file system. And for Gluster, the Debian side has not built up the ARM images. So I don't know whether we're supposed to go use the Ubuntu ones or not, but I, I suppose those would work. A new Jurassic Park. <laughs> Good one, Keith. <laughs> I want to be a velociraptor. Oh, so I can enroll my key, I guess. At some point, it's going to ask me for that, I would think. Nope. Bypassed it. Well, there's something to find out why it's why are we doing this? So I haven't done any I haven't done any homework on Ubuntu at all. I've been so busy trying to uh, trying to set up. I'm converting my Gluster file system over to a new hardware architecture, which is this. This little board here. This is a. This is an Odroid N2. This is the N2, but the N2 Plus looks very similar. So I'm moving it to this, and the reason I'm moving it to this is that that I was running an older ARM machine that was. Um, I think it was called the uh, home the home computer two. I think HC two. And the problem is, is the kernels are getting really old and it doesn't look like they're planning on doing any updates. The last time I was out there at, to the Odroid site, they said they pretty much have dropped support. So, yeah, I guess that means go find a new home. Jurassic Kitten. <laughs> Probably. Uh, let's see. I guess I could do it this way. Well, I do remember this. They are, they are adding, they're just, they're starting to add more packages into snaps. Uh, let's see. Snaps help. Snap list. Well, it's not that many. Wait, what is this doing here? Did they not update? Or maybe they're, maybe the... I'm going to go look. No version 4.40. 40.4, yep. So they did move. Uh, you know, I, yeah, the only problem I have with snaps is, is that anybody can drop a package on the store and no one checks to see 
is there any malware in this? And and uh, by the way, um, I think it was last week Linux showed up with a rootkit um, that is coming as part of the standard package, and I think it was being deployed with um, the ls command, the cat command, the copy command, the sudo command. So all the things you would normally run are were at least in those particular. They cleaned them out, but the the repos had <laughs> actually had a rootkit built into it that would uh, uh, it would basically sign up your machine for crypto mining. Oh, nice. I mean, if you're going to do that, at least hey, come on, give me a cut. I mean, if you're going to use my machine for crypto mining, at least give me a cut. Let's see what we got to install here. Oop. Must have fat fingered something as usual. Okay, so we're all up to date. Um, I'm going to put out my usual. Oops. I think all of these are going to be installed already. Well, maybe not. I'll take a look at, once I get my tools out here, let's see what we're doing. So, memory-wise, I'm sure that it's lower. I When I brought this up earlier, it was at 484 meg. Um, so... Yeah, I bet a lot of that is file buffers. We can find out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of that is the cache for the files. So let's see. Uh, yeah, about 300 and some meg. <laughs> um, let's do the usual thing. 2110, nothing else that I see. Kernel is 513, I know that. 0-19 is the patch level. Compiled October the 7th. And let's go do... See what the what how how much hardening this is going to need. I noticed that um, I saw um, learning uh, learning Linux. Jay did a video with uh, Tom Lawrence this week. I, I think it was the Home Lab. They were doing it together, and they were talking about Linus. It's good to see that it's getting some exposure. Uh, if you're not using the tool, the tool's free. You don't have to pay unless you want some of the commercial features in it. But yeah, it is free. Let's see, 66. Let's see what it found. Probably my usual. There's no firewall. Yep, no firewall. No grub password. That one's new. Oh, disabling cord up. Okay. Yeah, these are always the same. Cups. Yeah, I'll un uninstall that. We'll just get rid of that problem. And I need to turn on auditing and logging and all that nonsense. But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fairly... Okay, I guess. I guess the important thing, though, is what can I change? What's the default backgrounds look like?
This is nice. They give you a minimize button now, so you don't have to go out and install a uh, an, an extension for it. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all right. It's not. It's not great. It's all right. That looks like an old photograph. Looks like ectochrome. Or, excuse me, Kodachrome. Now it really looks like ectochrome. <laughs> For those of you that haven't messed with film, in the in the old days they had to they had to coat film with a with a fixer for the color and there was a period of time where ectochrome they got it wrong and it started drifting toward the green and the blue over time and then uh, the same thing happened with Kodachrome it would drift to the yellow and to the uh, orange so yeah in fact I I've got some old photos uh, my my father took and their slides and the color is so washed out on them that, yeah, even even Photoshop can't restore them. There's just not enough color information there. But um, I guess we should look at the release instead of talking about old stuff. What do we got? What are they giving us? Image Magic, Power Stats, LibreOffice, all the same utilities. One thing I wish they would do is put the release notes in here somewhere. I don't see, I don't really see a whole lot of difference other than the things that are under the cover. I'm going to, I'm going to log out for a second. And I'm going to see if I can turn off Waylon. Yes, I can. Well, that certainly sped things up a bit. How old is your colonel, Jeffrey? <laughs> I don't I don't replace the my the colonels. I let if there's a security update I'll do that, but I don't I don't yeah. I'm not trying to ask for trouble. Oh no, that was interesting. It just crashed. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see if we can crash X windows again. Yep, it's crashing again. No response. Oh, there it went finally. Yeah, I'd say that's a little sluggish. Okay, we'll put it back over on Waylon. Four nineteen. Well, that's that's all right. I still got some that are that old. Yeah, that's all right. At least it's still supported for a couple more years. Or 
Yeah, it's next year, isn't it? Yeah, and support ends next year for that one, I think. So, I don't know. I don't really see a whole lot of difference here. Looks like they've done a lot of work under the covers, but I don't really see a whole lot of difference. I suppose we should go look at the software store. Snap. It crashed again. <laughs> either, either, um, I think it hates me. Let me try to start the council again. Yeah, you think? All right, I'll send it. I was wondering if maybe uh, they might be rushing this a bit. Oh. Well, that's good. <laughs> Doesn't like my password either. Do I have my key lock on? Nope. No, it's just, well, that's a good trick. You don't want to hear about any problems with your release? Break the reporter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't got a clue why, why, you know, I understand the reason behind having applications that are protected inside of a container. That's really a great idea. But what oh, really bothers me, this is the typical approach that Linux always has. Oh, I got an idea. Let's do one. No, wait, I don't like yours. Let's. I'll do a different one. Oh, wait, I don't like yours. I think I'll do a different one. It's like, can't you guys get in a room and just kind of talk it over and figure it out? Which one you'd like to use? It's not like, you know, you guys are competing for a proprietary, the best proprietary software of the year. I mean, I want to go look at the logs. That's what I want to go do and see why this is crashing. It's probably a driver. Yep. Why the, all these crashes? The other thing they had to fix is put this, this GUI inside the kernel in a protected space so it doesn't keep knocking down everything because when an application crashes, it takes everything out. Deactivated successfully? What? <laughs> So true, Razzle. Actually, you want to do it over dinner because then the, the napkins all disappear and get marked up and somebody has to pick them up off the floor afterwards and take them home to understand what was it we agreed to design? Uh, crash. Looks like it's up. It looks like it's gnome. Can't find a device. That's <laughs> good. That's good. So I primarily wanted to do this today to just answer questions to you from you guys, but yeah, I I think I'm gonna. I don't think I need to look at this. I think we need a patch first before this is gonna be useful. 
I was wondering if they might have rushed it. Um, usually, they're usually Ubuntu is like at the end of October. They're they're it's like a couple of days either before or after Fedora rolls out. So they're they're usually right together. <laughs> I don't know a bar room might work too. I um although everybody would forget what they des what they wanted to do. So um let me see if I can bring up Nisus and show you that. Let's see, I'm, I'm on Firefox, I think. I hope. Yeah. All right. Eighty-eight thirty-four, I think. It may not be up. Nope, it's not there. Let me uh, go see if I need to start it. <laughs> they got six months before they roll out the next uh, long-term release, right? Which is probably what they really care about. Uh, Net tools. I'm just going to validate that I have a... I, I'm going to see what port it's on and make sure I do have the firewall open. <laughs> that might be good. Have it broken? No, it goes through it. It goes through two phases. It goes through... The working part of those, it's the Intel TikTok, right? The tick, it works, talk, it breaks. Yeah, that's the way it works. Let's see. Let me make sure. Well, if my fingers will work. Let's see. Where are you? 8834. Aha! The plot thickens. Okay. And we'll just check and see if the port is open now. What you're all, only what you're really learning is my paranoia about system. These are these are home <laughs> systems. We have it locked down. We have it locked down like this. All right. Now let's try. What do you know? Okay. So the essential release, like I said, is free. What this is, is a auditing and pen testing tool. So I, I can, you have on the essential side of this licenses for up to 16 hosts. That is 16 hosts that are being scanned. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what they feel, how they feel about, well, okay, so if I put this 16 in this host and I go get another copy of essential, you know, of the essentials, can I do that? I don't know how they feel about that. They probably, they probably don't care. So, the, typically what you would do here is I would initiate a new scan. 
And when you do that, you have all these choices. So I can go through a host discovery, which is basically like, it's a basically a, a ping to see if I have, where my hosts are in my network. And then you have these utilities here, which do advanced scans. Like I said earlier, this system will scan Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. So it'll look for uh, vulnerabilities in any of those. So what I'm going to do first is just a host discovery scan. There's no penalty as far as the, the number of hosts that it finds in the discovery phase. It's only when it's looking at the system from the standpoint of vulnerabilities. So I'm just going to give it a name. This is LAN2 discovery. And this is my Gluster FS LAN. And I'll just do the entire network. Oops. All right. And that's all I should have to do. I'll just save it. It's right there. It has it run. This is your, your, your launch button. So we'll go ahead and fire it off. And it comes, it'll pop up to the top and bold it. You can then just click on it if you want to watch the status as it rolls through. Now, it's not going to check for any vulnerabilities here. So, what do you mean, Razzle? You, the... Yeah, this one, this machine that on Black Ice is, uh, is an AMD. It's a Ryzen. It's an older Ryzen. It's a 3700 or 30, yeah, 3700. I've had it for a while, obviously. Intel just hasn't kept up. That's the big problem. So it's completed, and... It's it it will give you kind of a cursory here. Well, here's some ports that are open. Uh, it does not know much about it, and then you can do you can do reporting with it. So I don't think I have much in the well. I don't think much is going to be in here because none of these things are here yet. Hi Sakai, nice to see you. So I'm going to just do, since, since that probably makes no sense at all, executive summary is what you would give to the, your C-level in your corporation. You give them pretty pictures and crayons, right? So um, all this is going to tell you is that, yeah, I found a host at that location, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. I I just started out on Red Hat long ago. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, when Red Hat first came out, they were free, right? So you could, um, if you wanted to give them money, they would sell you a book that had all the commands in it and a CD in the back, so you could do stuff with it. So, yeah, so you say, yeah, yeah. So you say, um, I've used it a few times, I've run it, you know, but it's not, it's not that I don't like it, it's not that at all. I don't know, for some reason it just doesn't click with me. I, I, I just, it's, it's nothing personal and it's nothing that it's deficient in. It's just, I don't know, it, my brain just doesn't get, a, it just doesn't work that way and I don't know why, it just, it, it just doesn't. All right, so this isn't of much use other than it tells you what hosts are on your network. Uh, this is really where we want to go. So let's let's do a and you can set up different folders. So if you've got multiple projects you're working on, you can stuff things in there and. And then I'm just going to do, uh, well, we probably ought to just do one target. So let's see. What do we want to do? I guess 
Let's do him. Let's do 5-7. Let's do a Debian machine and see what happens. If I did them all, we'd be here all night. So, so that's all I want to do. And I could, I could, I, I guess, hang on, let me go back and show you a couple things here. So these are the vulnerabilities and the history that will show up once the scan begins. So we'll go ahead and start it. And this will take a while. It's pretty thorough. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure it will find something. Yeah, I've seen that too, Jeff. It's it. I don't have anything against SUSE. I think it's a great distribution. It's it's one of the. It's definitely the one of the original three. I mean, but uh, I don't have anything against that. It. It's just it don't work for me. I my brain just I can't I can't process it. It just I don't know. It just it's short circuits. Yeah, yeah, Windows did that to me too. <laughs> and I think it was, it wasn't Vista, it was 8. It was, I mean, Vista was so short-lived, it was painful, but it was so short-lived, it was like, whew, wow, am I glad that that's over with. And then they came out with 8, and it was like, what? What, what is this, chiclets on the screen? Just, yeah, it was, uh, that, that did it for me. I was like, all right, I'm done. So yeah, so we're finding now these these ratings here are according to the uh, the the CVE, the critical vulnerability. Uh, yeah, this is according to the CVE. So if you if you're finding highs and mediums, that's that would be equivalent. So the CVEs are rated from one to ten, and it changes scoring. I think it's every three level so one two three would be low and then uh, four five six would be medium high would be six would be seven eight and then nine and ten is critical so I think that's it I could we could go look I'm just doing it from memory off the top of my head so I'm probably wrong it is still running but we can we can look at some of this right now so uh, oh, thank you, Sakai. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to help you guys by doing by providing you with information and, and places where you can go to gain more experience. Uh, m the way I learned things was I did two things. One, I was a system engineer for companies that installed computers for people, so. I mean, the, the level of problems that you run into there, it's always problems that teaches you. You can sit in class all you want, but it's when you encounter problems, that's when you become really good. I remember, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. So what my first time in, the, in, a, in a real job situation with Burroughs, uh, I walked in and a customer was having a problem with their, with their mainframe. It was a large computer. And it would run for about mm, ten, anywhere from 20 to, to, to about an hour, 20 minutes to an hour, and then it would just crash for no reason, just boom. And it would do it randomly, and it was never the same error. So it was some kind of intermittent weirdness. Well, we, you know, the engineers, it was like one of these things. The hardware guys were going, no, it's software. The software guys were going, no, it's hardware. They were blaming each other, and so I was stuck in the middle having to talk to the customer because they were my customer. And I got digging into it, and I started working with two of the field engineers that were local to try to diagnose the problem. And we finally got to a point where it was going to require us to replace the CPU. That's where we were going with it. We found that it was some kind of latency in the CPU that was causing the problem. And we didn't have the equipment to analyze it because at that time, those machines, they were up in the megahertz range, which, you know, the only tools we have in the field are oscilloscopes, which are totally useless at that speed. I mean, you can hardly see any kind of a blip, a signal at that speed. So um, they, 
we convinced a guy from the from the ma- the plant where it was manufactured, one of the design engineers, to come out, and they had equipment that could actually trace down to each chip what was going on. <laughs> we spent all this time, and we were going to have to spend about twenty five thousand dollars on a new board, a whole new. It was twenty five boards for the CPU, and and it was just like engineering was like, uh uh-uh, uh, we're not doing it, we're not doing it, and so this. This kid came out, they analyzed it, they found it was a 14 cent part. It was a resistor that was bad on one of the memory chips that was causing it to fail. It was just changing the voltage just enough that the memory was changing all by itself. So yeah, it was causing some flakiness, causing the machine to crash. So that that is how you learn. That's how you learn is, is you got to have some problems. So yeah, anytime you can work on a problem, do it. Seriously, I mean, jump in uh, because that that is where you learn. So, all right, let's see what we got here. So we've got an SSL cert that is cannot be trusted. Oh well, yeah, self yeah, self signed. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Um. Oh yeah, this is one of the ones I ran into. So there are a number of ciphers that are used by SSL and AES. Oh, it's SHA-1. Wow, we're still using SHA-1. Yikes. Yeah, so we probably should go in and configure those out so that we aren't having, you know, don't make the mistake of generating a key with those. Uh, I don't see anything yet. Let me go. Let me go back here and see. I had thought I saw something for SSH, DNS. So transfers are unprotected. Yep, probably should fix that. I don't know about power supplies, but I, I I'll tell you I, t- I got another story for you. So we had a we had a mainframe that ran on 440 volt electricity. That's a lot of power, and the capacitors in there were about mm, let me get let me get it over here about that big around and about three feet tall. One night the uh, phone line the machine had a phone had a remote diagnostic report in the back so it had a, had a dial up modem that you could dial into it and t- take diagnostic information off the machine so one night the telephone pole that was outside that had the phone line on it got hit by lightning and and uh, the, the customer called us the next morning and we went out and we could see the you know it was black going across the wall you just follow the, the, the vaporized it was the phone line wasn't there anymore it was completely vaporized well, you can see the black line is the bolt of lightning traced against the wall on the inside, went down into the machine and then bridged over into the power supply and and stopped. And we're like, wait, what? Those ca- the capacitors stopped the electricity from going any further. So and they're and they're swollen. They're they're now like this big. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and they're leaking, and we're going, oh, shoot. Uh, it was a different word. But, um, uh, yeah, we kind of let that kind of sit for a day. We said, we'll probably be back sometime tomorrow. I don't think any of us really want to touch that right now. Those, those capacitors are overcharged, and, yeah, nobody wants to get vaporized trying to disconnect them. So a couple of days later, we went out and replaced them, and the rest of the machine was fine. So, yeah. That's a good lightning arrestor. <laughs> Find some old power supplies off of a mainframe. So anyway, this is basically going through and what you would want to do once you had this completed. Let's see, it's still running, I think. No, it's completed. So we can do a report. And this one you'd probably want to send. Now, I'm not going to send the executive summary. But we'll probably want to generate a custom report that has a list of all the vulnerabilities. And then we'd probably send this off to your security team. Uh, Because in here, it's giving them everything. Here's the vulnerability it found. Here's the synopsis. Here's what's going on with it. Here's the references. 
And yeah, this this kind of information when you're going into Harden, and obviously I need to do some work here, uh, but and I will. So this this report will help me a lot. So I I really like this. What is my main camera? Um, I use a Panasonic GH4, and I use a, also use a GH7 when I'm doing product shots. Uh, that's that's currently what I'm using here. It's an old, it's an, I mean, that camera is probably, what, six, seven years old, something like that. I was using a, uh, an old Canon. I think it was a X10, I think, XA10. And, uh, yeah, I, I, it had uh, the mini HDMI connectors on it. And at the time, I was bridging HDMI to SDI because it had a pretty long run back to the server, and uh, um, that was pretty. It had a battery in it that was pretty heavy, and that th the <laughs> the cat <laughs> decided it, this would be a fun toy, and they and she ripped the uh, Velcro off, and the and the weight of it basically snapped the HDMI connector. It still works. Chalk talk. Um, so a chalk talk is uh, is an old expression engineers used to use when they were brainstorming or just talking about some new technology. So they they would gather and everybody would grab a piece of chalk and basically start working on a design. Jeffrey probably knows what I'm talking about. I'm sure he's he was involved in that. Um, yeah, I think you probably find. Uh, you know, if you're looking for Panasonic, I mean, they have some really expensive options. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they've got a couple of them that are up in the, I think, $3,500 range that look really nice. But I just use what I got, you know. I'm just like you, Keith. I just use what I got. So there's nothing. I mean, your cameras look great. I mean, I've seen your, your videos. They look awesome. And by the way, if you haven't seen Keith Burnett's, uh, Burnett's channel, go check it out. He does a lot of... Uh, production setup stuff and how to automate your your systems and get going so yeah if you if you're interested in producing videos at all he's a, he's an excellent resource for that he knows he knows audio he knows video he knows color science he's got he's got a nice setup there and uh, he's very interesting and delightful to listen to so go check him out I think you'll like him yeah, too young. well, you probably would call it either. Uh, you missed you missed the really fun one though, which was the felt board era. So, uh, but nowadays you would probably just call it a whiteboard talk. Yeah, whiteboard talk. So they do the you do the same thing uh, when you when you run a can ban, you're doing exactly the same thing. So, yep, that's what we did. Nothing new, just a different name. Oh, nice. The the Black Magic Pro, um, is that the web? Is that the web camera? Is that the web version? The studio camera. I think it is, but uh, yeah. So, what else can I answer for you? Um, this is kind of my first time. Whiteboard, yeah, whiteboard. This, yeah, it just gives you a cap. This one tells you your top threats. So if you don't work on anything else, this is the one that you should work on. So Yeah, my zone transfers are internal. I don't do anything external. So am, am I really worried about this? I would be if I was faced outward. Yeah, that this would be a bad thing. But I'll probably fix that. But it's yeah, that would be really bad if I was outside. Because then somebody could hack my uh, DNS network. Ah, okay, okay, yep. Nice, nice camera, nice camera. Yeah, the only you know I see a lot of people using. Well, let me put it this way: I see a lot of people buying that camera, but there's only I've only seen one guy use it in in uh, on YouTube, and I think it's because it takes some work. Right, because you're you want to run that camera. Is that right? You want to run it raw, 
right? You want to run it in raw mode. So it's going to take some work to get it. I know Aaron uh, Parecki spent, what, close to three or four months working on his own LUT. So he finally got that done. It looks nice. But I remember for a long time, he, he just kept saying, it's sitting there. I've been working on it. I, it's, and it would go the next week. It's still sitting there. I'm working on it. So, ah. Uh -huh. You mean like the the new phone, the new the new uh, Pine Book, the new Pine Phone Pro, that one. I hope it's not as underpowered. Let's see. I don't really want to do a, an ad for them. Let me turn that off, and we'll come back here. Yeah, it seems like it's uh, it's over at his other desk, right? He always has it over there. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it's when you're in raw mode. There's isn't there a, there's a file that you can use to map your color settings for your camera in. Right, there's... <clears throat> oh, the Pine Phone. Yeah, uh, yeah, the Pine Phone. It's a lot cheaper than the one that uh, is being offered by... Um, which one is that one? Let's see, they had... They had a, a, the pine book. The pine pe people had had one earlier last year, and I think it was a little underpowered. I think that's what a lot of people were saying. I saw the Elgato. It, it looked nice, Keith. It looked really nice. That's. That sounds that sounds kind of cool, Raz. Yeah, so definitely go check out Keith's channel uh, unless you're already a, an accomplished web produ a uh, YouTube producer. I'm not. I I go to listen to those guys so I can learn some more stuff and uh, try to do some more fancy things. I'm you know the video side is n new to me, so yeah, it's all new. I think. Uh, Let's see, we've been going about an hour. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go actually do a video on the Ubuntu 2010, see if I can figure out, 2110, see if I can figure out what the bugs are and figure out some workarounds for you guys. But uh, uh, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much all I had today. I, uh, I'm going to plan on doing these once a week, I think. I'm going to try to do them every Friday. And then if there's a time that works better for you guys, let me know. And maybe I'll put up a, a vote board and we can figure out a few times that it'll work, be better for more people to come and see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this today. I did. I had a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you did too. Hope to see you all again real soon. And uh, take care. And bye for now.